everyone, I'm Dimitra Achilopoulou, lecturer in structural design in James Watt's School of Engineering at the University of Glasgow. In this video, we're going to discover a little bit about the iconic topic of bridges. Over the years, bridges have evolved from just a necessity to connecting two points, point A and point B, to landmarks and attraction of big cities, like, for example, the bridges of the Roman Empire, our very own fourth bridge in Scotland, or even attractions from the past, from antiquity, like the Arcadic Bridge in Greece that dates back to the 13th century BC and is still in use. Bridges are classified in many categories based on their use, the service they offer, the material they're made of, or the space they are built upon. For example, if they span over a valley, over the mountain, etc., etc. Today we have many bridges, for example, transportation bridges or water bridges, or even floating bridges in order to offer services in order to transport energy. In order to understand how the design of bridges has evolved over the centuries, we have to understand the essence of design of every civil engineering project. This essence, this cornerstone, is to make sure that we transfer all the loads applied on the structure to the ground. So what kind of loads do we have applied on bridges? There are many stressors that gives us tons of loads, tons of categories, but the main categories are permanent loads, like the dead loads, for example, the self-weight of the structure, or dynamic loads like the traffic or earthquakes. There are also secondary loads like the wind. To be honest, we were not always sure how bridges respond to many phenomena. For example, in the past, we have witnessed many incidents like the Tacoma Bridge or the Millennium Bridge, and we have learned lessons that help us to improve our design. This is all what engineering is about, observation, analyzing, trial and error, and optimizing. The same thing happens with bridges over the years. We have developed methodologies in order to predict the performance of the bridge, to predict future events, and especially now in the area of climate change, that we have a huge impact of extreme phenomena like floods, wildfires, we are even more obliged not only to make these predictions, but also to monitor the bridges in real time. So what we do nowadays is instead of only designing bridges, we monitor many values in order to make sure that during the lifetime, they are transferring the loads to the ground safely. There are many technologies and smart sensors to do that, like fiber optics, for example, or modern accelerometers and numerous type of sensors out in the market. So are bridges just a complex structural system, or is it more than that? Well, lately, engineers see the whole bridge not only as a structure, but also as a service to the community. This means that we have an opportunity to create new spaces around the bridge, new opportunities for economic activities, and actually facilitate the whole economic growth of an area. Over the years, we have all those landmarks being built and all those technologies incorporated, but what makes a new bridge innovative enough? Well, nowadays we have to align with a United Nations sustainability goals and make our structures more resilient. And in bridges, there are two ways to do it. The first way is the structural component of it and the functionality component of it. So in terms of structural component of making and enhancing, improving our resilience and sustainability is by taking measures to ensure that we have an optimum carbon footprint to the environment, that we use eco-friendly materials, durable materials, we make sure that the life cycle of our asset is great enough to serve the goal of the community and monitor our structure with innovative, smart sensors and technologies. 
incorporating digital twins in order to increase the accuracy of our prediction saves us huge amounts of money each year. Moreover, what we can do in terms of functionality of the bridge is to take traffic management measures to make sure that we have areas with limited pollution due to the vehicles who visit the area or pass by the area, but also decreased noise levels. The complexity of bridges is not only about the design of it and the calculations, but also preserving it and maintaining its sustainability over the years by extending the life cycle of it. One more thing to consider is that there is no right and wrong solution. Majority of times we combine structural and functional solutions, traffic solutions, to make sure we have an optimum level of sustainability and resilience for our critical transport infrastructure assets like bridges. So if you're interested in becoming a future bridge engineer, join us in James Ward School of Engineering at the University of Glasgow. Our civil engineering discipline has modules where you'll be working on bridges close with industrial partners with feedback from real projects. Thank you for watching.